Hi, I'm Connor Batigan from Sandyford Business District and I would like to extend a warm welcome to everybody joining us this morning. Today is the last day of our Innovation Week and we've had three jam-packed days with great interaction and content um, and I'm looking forward to speaking uh, with you all uh, at this morning's session. Today's topic or theme, uh, or this morning's session I should say, is about uh, omni-channel retail and I am delighted uh, to welcome um, Lorraine Higgins, uh, who is joining us this morning. Um, Lorraine is Chief, Chief Executive, Digital, Digital Business Ireland. She's a former senator and a highly experienced public uh, policy professional, media commentator and strategist. Uh, she previously worked as a barrister and during her time as a senator was a regular contributor on matters including business, entrepreneurship and EU issues. In December 2015, she was named by the Irish Times as one of the top five people in politics to watch and one of the top 50 in Ireland to watch. Lorraine Higgins, Chief Executive, Digital Business Ireland, you're going to talk to us about e-commerce trends and business beyond boundaries. Good morning, my name is Lorraine Higgins and I'm Chief Executive of Digital Business Ireland, uh, the representative body for online, digital and businesses that are trading online. Um, we represent the interests of uh, many businesses from an advocacy perspective, public policy, try to bring best learnings uh, to those businesses and try and enable them and equip them to sell more online um, and outside of this country. So today my presentation is going to focus on the opportunities that exist for businesses in the global uh, digital marketplace. Uh, we all know over the course of COVID-19 the challenges that have impacted Irish businesses where many of them have had to close as a result of lockdowns. As we now encounter a second lockdown in this country, retailers and many businesses that have depended on footfall over their threshold will have to look at other sales channels in order to sell more, maintain their operations and keep people employed. Over the course of this year, we've seen a, a massive drive towards online sales. We know that based on statistics that have emerged from the likes of Wolfgang Digital that have told us that there was a 200% increase in retail sales uh, in Ireland. That is substantial considering uh, the preference that many Irish consumers have for human-to-human -human contact in bricks and mortar stores. Uh, that said, it doesn't mean that uh, bricks and mortar and and online are mutually exclusive. In fact, they both complement each other in this new normal that we're living through. We've also seen from IE Domain Registry that there's been a huge number of people availing of .ie websites um, having been successful in applying for the digital trading online voucher that's available from your local enterprise offices. Uh, we know that at least um, there's been a, a, a twofold increase in registration of domains. So it really tells you that businesses are seeing the opportunity that exists online and they're embracing it uh, with gusto. Um, while Ireland generally would have always been, um, or Irish businesses would have always been uh, focused on doing business within their own geographical area. Online provides other new marketplaces in different countries, inside and outside of the EU, where it's possible to export to. And I think that's really key in this discussion here today. A lot of retailers and online businesses must see themselves um, as exporters and realize their export potential that exists. 
Uh, we know that Enterprise Ireland have certainly taken a policy shift in terms of supporting uh, these businesses by introducing an online retail scheme, which is paying really good dividends uh, in the sense that it's enabling and equipping Irish businesses find these new marketplaces, getting the logistics, payments and market insight support that's required for them to grow and thrive. However, for Today, we're going to focus on um, my agenda, which is just up on screen now. Uh, first off, we'll discuss the global e-commerce trends and that global opportunity that exists. We'll also move on then to how to determine your global opportunity. We'll look at solutions for you and your customers to make uh, selling online that little bit more seamless. And then we're going to focus on the key takeaways uh, from my sessions before moving into a questions and answers uh, session. So when it comes to e-commerce trends, uh, it's quite phenomenal in terms of the numbers um, that exist. So there are 2.1 billion shoppers online. Um, we're already steadily approaching that figure. The expectation is that we were going to reach that number by 2021, but obviously COVID has acted as a catalyst uh, to deliver uh, those numbers in earlier course. In America, uh, 4.9 trillion US dollars uh, is the estimated global e-commerce sales by 2021. So just think about that figure for just one moment. Um, before COVID, Ireland was selling uh, 21 million a day uh, in online sales. Um, and unfortunately, two thirds of that spend at that time was leaving the country. However, we do know from recent figures that 53% of that figure now remains in Ireland and 47% um, is spent by Irish consumers on overseas business. So that's an important statistic that we have to try and reduce for the purposes of assisting Irish businesses. Uh, the amount of money spent globally uh, on cross-border purchases uh, is 994 billion US dollars, which is a considerable amount of money and it's a trend that we see emerging right throughout the globe. 81% uh, of global e-commerce sales ro rose by 81% in May 2020 compared to May 2019. So that really determines where your customer base is, the fact that they want to be online. It's all also uh, compatible with public health requirements and uh, there isn't the risk involved with going into bricks and mortar outlets. However, we know from an Irish perspective that people do want uh, that human to human contact, um, but at the same time, businesses cannot uh, ignore the sales channel opportunity that online presents. We know that 95% of the world's population lives outside of the United States. Um, and that's a really important statistic because very often, uh, Irish businesses, when they're looking at markets that they can target uh, for their products, traditionally we always focus on those English-speaking countries uh, like the United States and the United Kingdom. Obviously, with the advent of Brexit, things will change with the British marketplace. We don't know what they have planned. Uh, and likewise, we know that uh, with the United States, um, you know, that market is, is slightly diminishing as a consequence of the shift of economic power from east to west. Um, consumer behaviour has changed. Uh, that's something that all businesses need to take note of. Uh, people and consumers expect everything on demand at any time, at any place, and to be able to buy anywhere. So that's something that, that online businesses have to be really cognizant of. Um, there's less loyalty from consumers these days, and it's very, very much a different uh, behavioural matter, um, selling online as opposed to selling in-store, where you know the person that's your customer, you know that they're from within your vicinity, and you know that they are loyal uh, to your brand and to your business which they'll have proven over the years. So the expanding global marketplace, quite enormous. Two billion shoppers online and 50% of them shop cross-border. Uh, I explained earlier on in my presentation that that was slightly higher in Ireland in that two-thirds of online spend was leaving the country. We've since reduced that to uh, 47%, but we need to get that figure down that bit more. So I think, you know, a message that needs to be propagated by all online businesses in Ireland, um, especially coming into this busy season with Cyber Week and indeed with the Christmas period upon us, um, is advocating that people and consumers in Ireland click green and buy nearby. 
So just looking at the opportunity that exists for Irish businesses across uh, the global marketplace. In Canada, there are 18 million online shoppers and 67% of them buy cross-border. Uh, traditionally, they would have bought off US businesses, uh, but obviously other opportunities exist there. As an English and French speaking country, that provides opportunities to Irish businesses with the export potential. In the US, 205 million uh, online shoppers exist there and 32% of them buy cross-border. So that figure is almost is under half, uh, or sorry, rather over half um, of that of Canada. In Germany, which is a market that lots of Irish businesses target, um, 47 million uh, online shoppers exist there, and 23% of those uh, online uh, consumers buy cross-border. Poland uh, presents a great opportunity, particularly for Irish businesses, um, and given the numbers of, uh, or the, the, the relationship that exists between Poland and Ireland, um, there are 14, online, 14 million online shoppers in this country, and 54% of them uh, buy cross-border. A little further away in Japan, there are 77 million online shoppers, and 14% of them purchase cross-border. Japan is a leading retail um, destination. Um, it certainly is... Uh, leading the, the charge in terms of their innovation in this space, which probably lends itself to a, a very positive experience for consumers and which is why uh, consumers tend to, to, to be loyal to the brands within their country. Um, Brazil, 40 million online shoppers, 39% of them buy cross-border. Mexico, 19 million online shoppers, and 50% of them buy cross-border, and predominantly in the US. Australia, there are 12 million online shoppers, 69% of them buy cross-border. And then you have New Zealand with 2 million online shoppers, and 80% of them buying cross-border. Israel, which is the leading tech uh, country in, 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 in this part of the world, there are 4 million online shoppers with 82% of them buying cross-border. And the United Arab Emirates, 6 million online shoppers with 90% cross-border buyers. So you can really get a, a perspective in terms of the kind of possibilities that exist out there for Irish businesses. Once you define the market that you want to target, you need to eke out what kind of support is available from the state in order to develop uh, your brand in those markets and availing of all the supports that come from the local enterprise office and indeed Enterprise Ireland will be key to seeing what the possibilities are for your business in those markets. So I guess key to uh, the success of online businesses is understanding how your customers' buying habits have changed. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, customers demand flexibility, speed and reliability uh, in terms of the product landing at their destination. Consumers are increasingly purchasing via their mobile devices. So if you have a website, it's really important that you have a mobile enabled website as well. And prior to COVID, that was absolutely crucial for the purposes of the fact that you had a lot of consumers who were uh, transporting themselves long distances to work on a daily basis and that commute was an opportune time for them to check in and see what was available uh, for purchase online. Customers prefer to pay in local currency using local payment methods. That's absolutely crucial for any business who's looking to um, to sell in a different marketplace. Being sensitive to the price changes um, after converting your currency is really important. So, you know, we always need to round up in Ireland. So, you know, you will see that the goods and products will be for sale for nine euro fifty or ten euro or nine ninety nine. But what you don't want is to be advertising goods and products on your website where the price comes up as nine twenty two or nine thirty seven. It just gives um, a, a, the wrong message. More crucially in all of this is speed of delivery. It's really, really important for consumers now that they can get their products delivered to them um, in a, in a cost-effective way and in a way that, that's delivered very, very quickly. Um, that's something that retailers need to focus on in particular, particularly the last mile of delivery. 
58% uh, of global consumers would choose a retailer solely because of its delivery options. So think about that for a moment. When you go on the, the main marketplaces like Amazon, you're told, you're informed immediately when you can expect your product. I purchased something online on, on Sunday. I was told I would have it on Wednesday. I had it first thing um, yesterday morning. So that's something to, uh, to be mindful of. Consumers want that seamless experience. They want the dependency um, and they want to know when exactly a product is going to land at their doorstep. So having a really reliable logistics partner is crucial in that, um, in, in that eventuality. So the opportunity that exists uh, for businesses out there, everybody can benefit from this revolution, regardless of the size of your business. Um, I know this from having dealt with some of our member businesses, you know, where we had a situation when COVID hit initially, there was a West of Ireland shoe retailer um, who tripled his turnover um, on a given day because of his online presence and the fact that he decided uh, to put a great reduction on a number of his products. Um, that was really a, a situation which couldn't have been foreseen, but he seized the opportunity um, in lockdown to avail of the sales channel that was available to him while his bricks and mortar uh, outlets were closed. So cross-border e-commerce is growing at twice the rate of domestic e-commerce. So while you might have your website geared at the Irish market, you have to realise that you can now do business beyond your boundary and beyond our borders and, and see what opportunities exist, for instance, in Northern Ireland, in Britain, um, in America, in Canada, and in some of the other English-speaking countries that we outlined at the start of this presentation. Um, consumers don't mind where they get their product. I mentioned that they're a little more disloyal than they would be when it comes to a bricks and mortar outlet. Um, so it's really Really important to seize that opportunity uh, to try and develop you know markets further afield. International order values are typically higher than domestic order values which leads to a higher shopping cart spend. I think that's going to be music to the ears of a lot of viewers who are interested in um, strategies for driving their online business and it's important to bear that in mind. The barrier to entering global markets is less than you think. So sometimes we suffer in Ireland um, from, you know, focusing in our, on our immediate geographic area, be that within our town, be that within our county, or be that within our province and our country. However, we know that there are supports from Enterprise Ireland in the shape of the online retail scheme that should be availed of if you feel you have the scaling potential um, to enter new markets with your business. Selling your products globally allows you to diversify your, your business, especially in the face of rapid change like we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic. This is uh, acutely the case in situations where maybe next year we'll see a vaccine coming on uh, stream. And having access to a vaccine will help reopen the economy um, in a much quicker way. However, we have no certainty as to when Ireland can avail of significant numbers of the vaccine to ensure that uh, our people are vaccinated against this awful pandemic. Um, so for, with that in mind, you must look at other marketplaces that presents opportunities for your businesses uh, so that you're not curtailed by, by what happens at a national level. So what are the consumers looking for? Here is some evidence. 91% of consumers look for the available delivery options before reaching the checkout. So they'll find out how soon they can have their product. 58% 58 58 of global consumers would choose a retailer solely because of its delivery options. So you're getting a trend here that consumers just absolutely want that delivery option to come to them as quickly as possible after they have ordered their goods and products. 30% of shoppers would choose a retailer who offer a premium next day service. That's really worth bearing in mind, particularly for retailers and online businesses that are focusing on the national and domestic market. 50% of shoppers abandon carts because of limited shopping options. So think about that for a moment. That's a huge degree of lost spend. It's a huge degree of lost turnover in your business uh, because of your delivery options available. So I think if that's one takeaway you, you go away with from today, I think focusing on your delivery partner and ensuring that you have a reliable uh, logistics partner, particularly coming into Cyber Week, I think that all businesses can benefit from that. Twice as many customers are as likely to return to a retailer after a positive delivery experience. 
66% of online shoppers check the retailer's return policy before making a purchase. This is really, really important and businesses need to be aware of the compliance procedures that impact the way that they do business. They have to adhere to consumer rights. If they're selling in the Irish market, that has to be obviously something they're mindful of from an Irish perspective. But to, when they look to international markets, getting up to speed in terms of you know, the uh, compliance requirements uh, both within and outside the European Union is crucial. 58% uh, of uh, people will abandon their shopping cart because of higher than expected shipping costs. So we can tell that people are really, really price sensitive, none more so than right now. And it's important that, you know, that there's an integrated uh, price that's available with uh, the shipping costs uh, in the product ideally, but where that's not possible, looking for the most cost effective uh, logistics partner is important. 70% of online shoppers worldwide choose to prepay local duties and customs at checkout. This is an option that isn't exercised by Irish businesses, regretfully. Uh, and then shoppers and consumers, you know, get a fright when, when customs come to their door looking to collect the amount that's uh, outstanding on the products that they have uh, brought into the country or imported. So, Irish businesses, in order to get ahead of its competition, will need to focus on having that prepayment of local duties available. So the trading advantage of the global marketplace, cross-border e-commerce is growing by about 25% each year. An average shopping cart value increase of 70% is not unusual, which is incredible. So your digital marketing skills really come into a closer focus with regard to this statistic. Cross-border e-commerce shows half the returns rate compared to domestic sales. And that really feeds into the thinking of the consumer in terms of, oh my God, this is too much hassle to return this. Let's keep it and give it to somebody else. That's manna from heaven for retailers and online businesses. And it's something that needs to be borne in mind when you're dividing a strategy for entering a new marketplace. Limited product ranges or lack of local availability means that there is a market there waiting for you. So look and see where you can uh, find your niche, do your due diligence, use uh, the supports, the Irish supports that exist in other marketplaces, find chambers of commerce, see what's possible for your business uh, and make sure that you have a fulsome plan before you enter a new market and spend money on digital marketing uh, and other expenditure. Uh, customs isn't a barrier for most purchase purchasers um, as long as you have the right partner. So how do you get started? Um, one of the key things that you need to bear in mind is offering international shipping from your website. So eking out what opportunities exist with the various logistics companies that are available in Ireland um, would be key. So talking to the likes of DHL, DPD, Fastway, all of those um, is a good move right now. Offering a range of shipping options, including Express, is key because people want to receive uh, their goods and products in early course and offering flexible delivery options. So the big thing for consumers is they want the seamlessness um, of not being tied down, um, being able to receive their delivery at a time that's convenient for them or having drop off points that they can uh, collect the goods and products so that they don't have to drive all the way around their vicinity in order to, uh, to find where their product might be when they've missed the delivery driver. Providing a full tracking service is important. Um, it's an information um, aspect that can't be overlooked. People want to know where their goods and products are. Uh, and offering a very simple returns policy, making that as easy as possible and hoping that you, know, you can reduce the numbers of returns that come as a consequence of uh, a positive consumer experience on your website. So trust and brand loyalty during and after COVID. Um, Building trust is really, really important. And e-commerce Europe, uh, based in Brussels, have a trust mark which you can buy and put on your website for the purposes of uh, ensuring that consumers in the likes of the Netherlands, in Belgium, in Spain, Portugal, uh, and so on, are all aware that your business is a, is a business and a brand to be trusted. Um, we're very happy to take any questions in relation to that because e-commerce Europe are a partner of ours and they represent us at European level. Uh, so feel free to get in touch with us. But building trust and loyalty with your consumers has never been more important. Global e-commerce saw 81% 
good year on year growth in May and getting it right with your consumers now will certainly pay dividends down the road. During the coronavirus crisis, we saw in-store shopping plummet, unfortunately. That was consequential um, as a result of the fact that obviously lots and lots of stores had to close with public health uh, restrictions and guidelines that were issued by various governments. But as a consequence, we saw online shopping spiral. As I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, 200% increase in retail sales. As more consumers turn to online shopping, they're asking these very key questions. Is the merchant open for business? So you need to Put and position on your website that you are open. Um, your online website is an opportunity to avail of a sales channel and consumers 24 hours, seven days a week. But making it very, very clear that you're open for business is crucial. Putting it on a pinned tweet, uh, putting it on your social, on your other various social media is very important in order to ensure that the posi a positive and proper message is given. Giving comfort as well around whether the order is going to be fulfilled is important and, and letting your consumers know that the order will be handed over to a delivery service. So we're seeing a lot of nervousness around businesses really at this point in time. Um, lots and lots are obviously very challenged as a consequence of this pandemic. So the consumer is wary of that and they want that comfort. So you need to look and make sure that you comfort them to the extent that they will uh, translate their, their interest in products on your website uh, to the shopping cart and ultimately to sales. So ensuring as well that you will deliver the product within the usual delivery times and ensuring that you're compliant with health and safety issues regarding shipping. That is becoming more and more important, important to businesses and consumers. So strengthening that trust between you and your consumers and your business operations will be ready even in the worst of times. So the changing trends in e-commerce e globally. Uh, we can see that there's a, an increase of 172% on com computer monitors. That's really self-explanatory as a consequence of all the people who are working remotely, working from home, and are looking to be equipped. We see fitness equipment has gone up by 100% and 70% also. We see dog food has gone up by 159% as more and more people are at home and conscious as to the welfare of their pets. Uh, smoking cessation has gone, has gone up 122% and that's as a consequence of people getting more into fitness, worried about their health as a result of this pandemic. As people look to endorse and take on new, uh, new interests, craft kits and projects have increased in sales by 117%. Hair colouring go, has gone up by 115% as consumers look uh, to, to, to um, ensure that their cosmetics are dealt with in the, in, in the home. Office desks have seen a surge of 89%. Golf clubs have fallen by 33%. Um, camping equipment has fallen by 39%. Um, there's a possibility that consumers look at both of these as involving other people, third parties. Uh, I'm nervous around the, the um, pandemic, they are foregoing sales. Same thing with event and party supplies, down 55%. So they're really an indication as to where your consumers' minds are at. If you're in the athleisure wear sector, if you're in the fitness sector, um, exercise, uh, retailing, uh, sporting equipment, you'd stand to do very well. Um, same thing with food, same thing with novel uh, pastimes, but unfortunately anything that involves n great numbers of people um, is in the decline in terms of online sales. So your essential COVID-19 checklist. Clearly communicate any impact of COVID-19 on your homepage. Explain what's happening uh, within your store, within your warehouse, uh, and be open to that level of scrutiny because that's what your consumer demands right now. Leverage your product details page. Make sure that you have as much information as possible as people have more time now to spend considering the items that you have for sale. Consider lowering your free shipping threshold. Um, Look also to addressing COVID-19 and your shipping options, and also be certain that your meta descriptions match your website. Establish a, fre a frequently asked questions page to answer important consumer questions. Look also to proactively and consistently communicating updates with regard to your store with any disruptions that you might be um, encountering, be it bricks and mortar 
or on online. Prepare for an increase in consumer uh, service inquiries and see what's happening there. And leverage social media to communicate to your customers. Let customers know also that you have a reliable and flexi flexible logistics partner, as I mentioned earlier on in my presentation. So just to summarize, uh, based on what I've had to say today, cross-border e-commerce is a lucrative opportunity regardless of your company size. Customers' buying habits have changed and will continue to evolve. And sec a secure and dependable logistics partner is really important for your operations. COVID-19 has certainly changed the global retail landscape and building trust and loyalty is more important now than ever before. So don't be nervous, look and see what the opportunities are that are out there, embrace them and get started. I look forward to taking some questions with regard to my presentation uh, and any information that viewers might want to um, acquire based on what's happening in uh, the Irish online space. I'm happy to do that after this. Thank you. Uh, Lorraine Higgins, Chief Executive, Digital Business Ireland. Thank you very much. Um, looking forward to, to getting some more insights and, and understanding the relationship between bricks and mortar and online sales. Uh, before we introduce our, uh, our next uh, speaker, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Owen Costello. Uh, he's our moderator for today. Uh, Owen is Project uh, Director with Digital, CH, Digital HQ CLG. Uh, Owen is passionate about digital innovation and currently working to apply his experience to putting digital at the heart of the regeneration of his local town. Um, Owen Costello has worked on all sides of the business of digital growth and innovation. Um, he has served as a director of the IIA, ISP AI, and DLR Enterprise Board. And a personal high point was leading Ireland's first national startup week, the Startup Gathering in 2015. So Owen, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, we'll uh, look forward to hearing from you uh, at the end of uh, this session. But first up, we have David Campbell, and David is head of e-commerce uh, home by Flexify. But just a reminder to everybody that you can submit your questions on slider.com, or you can also email them in to events at sandyford.ie. David, you're very welcome. And just before we, we, we go into you, just your, your, you come with a huge amount of experience. Uh, as I said, you're head of e-commerce at home by Flexify, uh, the market leader in the Irish buy now, pay later sector. David has a strong background in retail and e-commerce, uh, having worked with leading brands across multiple sectors. Uh, he has represented Ireland at the Global E-Commerce Roundtable and has pre presented to both E-Commerce Europe and the United Nations on the Irish e-commerce landscape. David also holds a role as Director in Digital Business Ireland. David, you're very welcome and we look forward to hearing from you in terms of how to maximise your online sales. difficulties with David. Uh, we're just working with, with David at the moment. Uh, we're struggling to hear him. Uh, we will get to David uh, yeah. in a couple of moments. Uh, also, we have later on in our uh, session this morning, we have John Roddy, Commercial Director, Codec. Uh, John will be joining us hopefully after David. Um, and our afternoon session uh, is shaping up to be really interesting. Uh, it's very appropriate. It's economic for forecasting and agile innovation. Uh, we have Jim Power. Uh, he'll be joining us along with Owen Laverty, uh, Owen Hanrahan, and Joanne Hessian, uh, Lift Ireland. Uh, so looking forward to um, this afternoon's session. So I'm delighted that we can, well, I'm more delighted than anyone else uh, to welcome back uh, David Campbell, uh, Head of E-Commerce, home by Flexify. David, you're going to speak to us about how to maximize your online sales. Thanks a for the introduction, guys. Um, really appreciate it. A huge thank you, obviously, Sandy for Business District. Be delighted to have a uh, present here in terms of Innovation Week. It's a fantastic initiative, and pre presentations to date throughout the week have been fantastic. So my presentation today, it's all going to be about how you can maximize your online sales, and I'm going to go through different key aspects that you can implement and obviously take advantage of the online opportunity going forward. 
coming up to Cyber Week and Christmas 2020. So a little bit about myself. So previously I was the e-commerce manager in Retail Excellence Ireland. I dealt with leading retailers across multiple sectors, whether it be Harvey Norman, Woody's DIY, CompuB, for example. We supported these on all different aspects of online, whether it be developing websites, social media, logistics, payments, and we develop great relationships with the likes of Google, Facebook, and we're also partners of e-commerce Europe. So it's a great experience for myself. And in my current role in Home by Flexify, I'm the head of e-commerce. We support multiple partners across various different sectors, whether it be Samsung, Audi, Therapy Clinic, for example, we're the market leader in the buy now, pay later sector. And we work both in-store online, um, we're an Australian-based company, with a head office over in Sydney, and we also have offices in New Zealand. But a big focus for us right now is also supporting as many Irish merchants as we can um, in light of obviously the lockdown restrictions and how we can boost their online opportunity. As mentioned previously, I'm also director in Digital Business Ireland. It's a great organization set up to help any um, merchant trading online across multiple sectors, whether it be um, HR, could be public policy, um, food, pharmacy, for example. So we're a dedicated support body. If anybody wants any advice or information, please get in touch with myself or Lorraine directly, and we'll be more than happy to support. So today on the agenda, I'll keep this as brief as possible, but we're going to go through a few metrics that I think are extremely important for retailers to implement and will help you obviously maximize driver sales ahead of Cyber Week. So we'll go through email marketing, we'll dive into social media, content creation, SEO, website user experience, and then also the various different support mechanisms that are available to business, both in Ireland at the moment. So first up, email marketing. It's such a fantastic tool that businesses can obviously utilize where it be to boost positive brand awareness, increase your conversion rate, and also generate positive customer loyalty and um, boost, boost your brand as a whole. So first up, personalization. Whenever you're obviously sending your emails out to customers, you have to make sure it's personal and it's obviously relevant to the dedicated user, whether it be me, for example, I'm into athletics, health and fitness. So I might get running running adverts for, for example, maybe Gym Plus Coffee, it could be Lifestyle Sports, for example. The content has to be relevant to myself based on previous interactions with the website. You could be doing keep maps, for example, monitoring previous shopping habits, but it's all about resonating and building that positive brand and loyalty with your customers. Subject lines are absolutely crucial. So it has to be captivating. It has to be interesting. It has to actually entice the customer to actually open this email first and foremost. Time to send is a really, really important aspect to obviously effective email marketing. So you need to monitor various different open rates, previous campaigns, how your customers are interacting with your brand based on previous Shopping habits, for example, it might be better early in the morning when people are traveling to work, for example, or maybe after in the evening, people might be more likely to obviously convert online, whether they finish their day of work, they could be sitting down on the couch and browsing through various different products. And another really important aspect is obviously to segment your email database. So this is to go through all the data you have on hand, whether it be through your CRM, for example, or whatever database you have. So segment your email campaigns based on previous shopping habits you can do based down by demographics whether it be age and um, whether it be male or female different uh, demographics where customers are based for example so this can help you obviously target your uh, dedicated customers a bit more effectively down the line content is key so the content has to be relevant it has to be appealing it has to be visually appealing first and foremost obviously to the user the content it has to be straightforward and straight to the point it's you're always competing against various different brands and uh, now it's a really competitive landscape so you need to stand up from from the crowd and highlight your unique, unique selling point and what differs you from your competitors responsive and optimized design so it's so important to test constantly whether it be on laptop it could be on desktop it could be on mobile devices just to ensure that everything's formatted correctly it's displaying as it should and it just promotes a better user experience effective call to actions so it can be used for where various different events for example whether it be signing up you could have a survey looking to boost respondents or whether you're an online retailer for example buy now so just making it as easy and clear as possible for the actual user to interact with your brand and then last but not least measuring performance 
it's so important to obviously track how your campaigns are performing previous campaigns what worked well what work didn't work well for example and how you can optimize and use these learnings going forward for future campaigns this example one of my favorite brands this is lifestyle sports and this is just a general example of what an effective email campaign should be structured so clear up the top nike running be first to the finish line so automatically when i see this it comes into my head that i'm obviously going to be ahead of my competitors if i'm buying or utilizing these products the standard lifestyle sports uh, logo everything's clearing consents faster stronger it's all about that um in the back of the head just resonating with your customers obviously you need these products and they're going to give you that little extra edge just below the email banner so this is your unique selling point order before 10 p.m for next day delivery if i'm browsing at whether 8 or 9 p.m at night it's a really really competitive offering and it's more than likely going to make me increase and um, my likely to uh, convert shop now clear call to actions it's only a small description on the actual um, products, but it's straight, clear, concise, to the point. You highlight the key products, what obviously works well. You're obviously trying to upsell higher ticket items if possible, or to be bonding. There's another clear call to action, and then all your relevant contact details are at the bottom, whether it be contact us, uh, delivery information, and then uh, social icons, for example. So you just want to make it clear and concise, easy for the customers to interact with your brand few different tools you can utilize mailchimp for example it's a free online tool up to 2000 users you can segment all your email database upload various different templates you can monitor your performance and um, it's a great tool it's handy it's cost effective and many Irish businesses across all sectors use this hubspot is also a great uh, crm system so there's multiple features in this whether it be crm you can link in say your marketing campaigns social media as well so there's a lot of opportunities with these and one thing that we use internally in Home by Flexify is Campaign Monitor. So it's a fantastic uh, tool that we use, obviously, to segment our uh, email database based on previous shopping habits. And it just allows us to be a bit more effective with our online marketing. Social media, you can't get away from it. There's so many different platforms coming out nearly every week, every month or something. Whether it be Facebook, Instagram, it could be TikTok, it could be Snapchat. So there really is something for everybody and it's just about finding the right platform for your business to effectively engage with your customers and boost that brand engagement one fantastic thing about social media is it has the power to obviously bring communities together so on the left hand side here we see the do it for dan campaign so dan is a small uh, child and unfortunately he's unwell at the moment but they launched a gofundme campaign for the people of ireland and it brought everybody together to obviously fundraise for life-saving treatment and it's obviously fantastic that they did make the target for this and it's just great to obviously see people of ireland coming together during obviously these tough times and on the right hand side we see a campaign from louise cooney so she's a well-known influencer in ireland whether it be fashion lifestyle for example and she supported pieta house so this year due to covid restrictions they weren't obviously able to have the darkness to run light uh, campaign this is their main fundraiser for the year and louise set up a gofundme page to obviously support and uh, great funds for the work that this charity needs to do to promote mental health awareness and just based on this one campaign from her social media campaign she raised over seventy thousand euro so that was a fantastic achievement one great tool that people should definitely utilize is Facebook for Business. So it's a great free online resource. You can learn about all the insights, solutions, different courses, certificates that Facebook offer. So on the next slide, you can see all the various different platforms you can go through, whether it be Facebook, it can be Instagram, it can be WhatsApp, all your various different marketing campaigns. If you want to create content, if you want to manage your ads on Facebook, any kind of creative inspiration whether it be apps different utilities they can utilize it's absolutely fantastic resource and you definitely should utilize this there's online learning and certificates that you can also upskill whether it be individually it could be for your team so definitely do get on board with this and obviously if some people have a bit more free time on their hands at the moment it's definitely worth upskilling yourself through this resource another great piece of resources from the facebook business is the various different trends and reports they have so they have in-depth analysis across all different sectors whether it be fashion it could be retail it could be food so there's really great uh, resources available 
and it's the latest insights across all users across various different platforms and different demographics across the world so you should definitely check these out and what are the great addition to uh, the Facebook business platform is the partner section. So these are all registered partners who specialize in various different aspects of advertising across the platforms they use. And it's based on sectors and demographic location. So you can find a wide range of great um, Irish partners, obviously available to support your business and help drive your online growth. Next up, Twitter. So Twitter for myself, I find it absolutely fantastic in terms of news, different updates. One thing that's great in terms for retailers is customer support. So if you're looking for updated um, order information, for example, it's great. You see the likes of DPD, DHL, we're always doing this. Um, updated opening hours, say for example, obviously with the change in landscape, it's great to obviously update your customers and just interact with them a bit more efficiently. One thing that uh, Twitter also has, similar to Facebook, so they have their business account. So there's a wide range of different solutions they have, whether it be basics, just introduction to Twitter, creating your profile, for example, how to actually connect with your customers. Then on the right-hand side, all your targeting, whether it be ad campaign, analytics, so how you can actually monitor your performance, how these are working well, and how you can target them a bit more effectively. You have your ads. A help center, so this is general support, any advice or information you need, whether it be setting up campaigns, to dedicated support in place for that. And also there's various different resources and guides. So trialed and tested campaigns, whether it be just blogs, there's webinars, success stories. So you don't need to reinvent a wheel with this, but definitely do utilize the supports that they have available. One of the things I love most about Twitter is you don't you don't need to reinvent a wheel, as I mentioned, but and sometimes it's the most simple ideas that come across the most effective. So on the right hand side, you can see this is Carter Wilkinson. So this is a teenager from um, Wisconsin in America, and he just sent a general tweet one day to Wendy's. Yo, um, how many retweets for a year supply of free chicken nuggets? They came back and they replied 18 million, just as a joke. But this thing took off. It went NBC, CNN, all global uh, stars, whether it be across sports, movie stars. They all piggyback on the back of this. And it actually beat the famous uh, Oscar selfie taken by Ellen DeGeneres. So you can see you have the likes of Brad Pitt's. Brad Pitt and this, like all well-known names, and it's actually the most, the second most popular tweet of all time. So it just shows, like simple ideas can obviously be hugely effective for your brand. So do think about that. It's cool and quirky stuff. Another great aspect uh, for social media and to upskill your um, learning opportunities is LinkedIn learning. So whether it be individual or team basis, they have a wide range of resources available across multiple topics. So whether it be, it could be marketing, it could be PowerPoint, it could be Excel, they have a huge amount of resources available, whether it be online certificates, just courses, and just blogs, just webinars. So definitely do check out these tools to obviously help your online performance and upskill your team internally during these challenging times. A few good resources you can utilize, Canva. So Canva is a free online tool. There's obviously a paid version. But you can use this to create really uh, professional content, whether it be posters, social media, uh, campaigns. You can use this for different web banners, just designing really professional looking content at a cost effective price. Put Suite in the middle. So this is, allows you to schedule all um, your social media posts across different platforms, whether it be Facebook, it could be Twitter, it could be LinkedIn. It just gives you a bit more um, consistency and allows you to focus on different aspects of the brand different agency if you're obviously looking to outsource this if you don't have the resource internally you can check out social media elite they're an Irish agency they work with some fantastic brands such as Sosumi and Mars Pharmacy Dunn Stores for example so they have a wealth of knowledge and expertise available content is king so you need to create obviously content that's visually appealing that's going to uh, appeal to the users and generate positive brand awareness and hopefully drive your sales so three great examples. So this is Gymshark on the left-hand side. So the fastest growing UK company and their health and fitness brands and athletics, athletic um, and fitness equipment primarily. So they tweeted earlier in the year, we changed our name to Home Shark because some of you needed reminding to stay home. This actually was their most popular tweet of all time and received millions of retweets and likes across uh, Twitter. So 
it just shows that the power of social media, you can obviously bring a wider community together. One of my favorites on the right hand side, uh, it's Usain Bolt. So he's been keeping his two meter distance since he ever, since day one, since he started running. So it's all about social distancing, but it just shows kind of cool and quirky initiatives. And then last but not least, just on the right hand side, Nike. So they pushed this out a couple of months ago to obviously generate awareness on the importance of playing together on the same team to protect the protect wider community. If you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. One fantastic example of an Irish brand who have got content um, absolutely perfect. They've nailed it. They've nailed it. And this is Gym Plus Coffee. So our athletics and fitness brands, they do in-store online events. They're brand new Driscoll as their head of community. They support uh, Irish females. For example, Amy O'Donoghue, she's an international Irish athlete. And it's big into obviously supporting uh, Irish females in sport because we need to obviously support them as much as possible. We have some fantastic athletes and we just need to ensure that they obviously get the correct coverage. One great thing that they do is they pick a week. So this is picturing uh, the various different um, various different um, travel experiences from their various different customers showcasing the actual brands uh, that they wear. And last but not least, so this is Make Life Richer campaign, just on the left-hand side. So this is all about their brand values and how they can obviously create a community to bring Irish consumers together and obviously enhance their lifestyle, whether it be through health and fitness activities. A few people worth following. So you can check out Wolfgang Digital. They do some fantastic resources and reports so the e-commerce benchmark um, a report for example it's one of the best reports you come across in the irish e-commerce industry Vinny o'brien on the right hand side you should check definitely check him out on linkedin any online trends coming down the line he'll be the first one to obviously notify you guys if you want to upskill your knowledge and expertise from the paid version whether it be online courses certificates check out the digital marketing institute a few other different resources, Love in Dublin, for example, if you want to do positive brand awareness, whether it be editorial campaigns on a nationwide uh, scale, they have a wide range of resources, ads back from Sky. You can obviously promote your brand across TV. They have some fantastic resources, which are extremely cost effective for retailers at the moment to obviously support them in the current landscape. And on the right hand side, these are just a few different apps from Facebook. So you don't need to pay for a huge amount of these resources if you think joe wicks body coach he actually done all his workouts initially just from filming on an iphone device so it shows that you don't need to obviously have the most expensive equipment to create fantastic campaigns so next up search engine optimization seo is absolutely crucial to your online performance and it's a backbone uh, for your website performance so there's no point in obviously developing an absolutely fantastic website social media campaigns if you're not doing the background search engine optimization so a few technical seo points that are really important and i think you should utilize so mobile page load speed obviously ensure that these are optimized they're performing well constantly check these uh, daily hourly if possible if you can just to make sure everything's running on optimized performance error 404 messages make sure all your content on site it's fully optimized there's no errors being received to uh, users for example because it's poor brand experience and if i go onto a new website click on a page and if i get an error 404 message i'm more than likely won't revisit that google amp for faster load times so this is optimizing say your website content whether it be your html javascript for example do make sure your agency or your web developers are on top of this website index for content so this is obviously ensuring say the most relevant search results are given to the users. So say, for example, if I type in running and fitness, I might be brought to the running and fitness section of lifestyle sports, where certain um, retailers, for example, might bring me to football or golf, and it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So it's not uh, a positive use for, uh, user experience for myself. Update XML sitemaps for new pages. So you need to be telling Google and making them aware that obviously have new content coming out and they can obviously uh, showcase the most relevant search result to the user searching for your brand or different trends. Then lastly, on the technical side, so canonical, uh, canonical tags for similar pages. So say, for example, if you have similar content across um, various different pages on your website, 
you just want to avoid duplication and just make sure that the user is directed to the most relevant um, page based on their search query on Google. On-site SEO, so you need to target more efficient keywords. So what you need to be doing, obviously, at the moment and before Black Friday, um, Christmas, for example, you need to be searching what are the key terms, whether it be across Google, what are people searching for uh, based on your industry, based on your specific target market, for example. And you have to be smart because, obviously, if there's more traction for various different keywords, it's going to be more effective to kind of bid on these, whether it be through your AdWords campaigns or Google Shopping. So you just need to take these into account. As you mentioned previously with the emails, clear call to actions, they have to be clear and concise across the site, and whether it be applying for um, an application, for example, if you a retailer shop now, for example, just in the shopping cart or an event sign up, you just need to make it as clear as possible for the user. Unique selling point, you need to shout and scream what differs you from your competitors, how you can stand out from the crowd and how you can deliver that same fantastic uh, customer experience on site with your website as you would within your physical retail store, if that applies. Fix broken links, I'll always be checking these. Just make sure everything's fully optimized on the site. There's no error for four messages and just make sure everything's working as it should be. Brand mention links. So if you're redirecting um, to different uh, pages, for example, uh, Love in Dublin, you might have an editorial article and you might reference it back to your site. Just make sure everything's uh, working correctly. And then blogs. Can't emphasize how important these are. They're not utilized fully, in my opinion, for uh, retailers across the country, and it's a fantastic opportunity. You know, it's a free resource you can use if needs be um, to promote your positive brand awareness and across various different sectors, whether it be health and fitness, could be um, health, and it could be pharmacy, it could be retail. So there's a wide range of opportunities. That's all positive for obviously boosting your SEO and page rank on Google search engine few different resources you can utilize Google Digital Garage. It's fantastic online resources to upskill uh, your knowledge across multiple topics, whether it be online certificates, it can be courses, they have webinars, for example, so you can go to Google AdWords, your analytics, YouTube shopping, and you can do Google shopping, for example, and definitely utilize these. I've used it myself and it's fantastic resources. You can get obviously certified um, for their actual Google Academy. So it's great if uh, for individually, for your team internally, and also if you're on the job hunt at the moment, for example. Or an Irish agency, one that I can't recommend highly enough, core optimization, the fantastic resources they work with ourselves and Home by Flexify, they work with the K Club, for example, CompuB, and they specialize in a wide range of different um, aspects whether it be paid search could be video advertising google shopping for example so definitely do get in touch with them if you're looking to outsource your agency lastly so website user experience so it's a key point i just want to finish on and it's obviously one of the most critical aspects that you need to obviously focus on to boost your positive brand awareness and drive your sales ahead of cyber week and christmas 2020 so fundamentals first and foremost you need to implement heat maps on the website. So you need to be tracking the user journey, what's working well, what are people searching, and you can obviously highlight if there's a drop off, for example. And these things you can monitor obviously effectively with your Google Analytics. So all the key online metrics, so your users, your bounce rates, your conversion rates. So you need to be checking these daily and just optimize your performance as much as possible. iChat, it's a great online resource that you can use. So to obviously Guide the customers if they have any search queries, for example, guide them to obviously the relevant um, products that they're searching and just different customer support. It's a better user experience. Predictive search, it's a great tool you can utilize on uh, the website. Say, for example, if I'm on Harvey Norman, type in LAP, it'll come back to laptop and then it'll come back with the most relevant search terms based on my previous uh, shopping habits and user activity on the website. Real time stock, Lorraine mentioned this. It's obviously crucial to have your uh, EPOS system integrated in real time with your uh, website stock because there's nothing more uh, irritating, for example, if you go to buy a product, you pay for everything, and then you get an email back from a retailer saying, I'm sorry, we actually don't have that in stock. Reviews, last but not least on this point, it's a fantastic tool across different platforms, whether it be Trustpilot, it could be Google Reviews, could be 
Facebook. So it's a great way to obviously boost your positive brand awareness um, and obviously drive uh, conversions across the site. One tool that people should definitely utilize is Digital Assistant. So this is an on-site a tool that's used to obviously promote uh, the user experience and guide them through the purchasing funnel. So it improves customer engagement, so it's more personal, and um, it obviously helps them with the relevant search query, it increases your conversion rate, so you obviously want to upsell the higher ticket items. Say for example, if you're buying a laptop, you can guide them down the purchasing funnel, you want to sell the warranty, you want insurance, there might be some added memory for example, so it's a great tool to help with that. It enhances customer loyalty, it's better experience, you're looking after your customers and are more likely to actually return to your website. And then it's also the one-to-one -one personalized experience. Hi David, how are you today? What are you looking for? How can I help you? You know, it's just more positive brand awareness and it's more likely that I'll return to your website for future purchases and recommend you to a friend or family, for example. So this is an example of Digital Assistant. Uh, this is VE Global, they're fantastic resources and tools available. And just on the left hand side, you can see this is search query um, from a user, for example. So you need help choosing a laptop, what will you be using for? So if I typed in laptop on Curry's PC World, for example, the digital assistant will pop up and they're looking for a bit more information to obviously guide the user back to the most relevant search term, whether it be browsing the web, school, office, or gaming. So based on my um, interaction and feedback on what I'm looking for, the digital system will guide me down the purchasing funnel based on the most relevant product for my needs. You can use different discount codes. So whether it be a simple pop-up, for example, 10% off if you want to obviously shift and new promotions or various different items. If you have high levels of stock, for example, you can do a simple five or 10% discount code. You can do a pop-up newsletter, for example. It's all about creating like the sense of urgency. So expire soon. And then you might send a large discount code later at night to obviously increase their likely to purchase and increase your overall conversion rates. Cross sell items, as I mentioned before, with uh, the laptop example. So when you're searching for a laptop, you obviously want to cross sell various different items, whether it be insurance, additional memory, different warranty, for example. So it's all about trying to increase your conversion rate as much as possible during these times. One tool that people should definitely utilize is Google Market Finder. So if you type in Google Market Finder online, this is a wide range of supports available to retailers across all different industries across the globe. And if you type in your website, it'll give various different search terms. So what it does is it provides you with advice and expertise, whether it be payment methods in various different countries, could be logistics, it could be payment and tax and legislation, for example, what works well, in Ireland, it may not be the exact same uh, online shopping trends, say, for example, whether it be Germany or it could be over in the UK. So these are all uh, various different aspects and resources that you should utilize if you're looking to obviously expand your online presence internationally. Other tools that they have uh, on site is various different aspects. So if you want to support and expertise, developing global marketing strategy, display advertising, video advertising across YouTube, for example, an absolute wealth of resources available so definitely do utilize the google market finder platform different platforms for example with irish retailers they're extremely popular at the moment with shopify it's a fantastic resource it's out of the box solution the beauty about shopify is you don't need the deep down and um, developer knowledge or te technical expertise and it integrates with your repo system various different platforms whether it be facebook uh, different social tools so it's a great tool to obviously utilize WooCommerce is very uh, popular with Irish merchants at the moment Magento for example it's a bit more complex if you have large your product SKU um, selection whether it be high-end fashion retailers they might utilize Magento too AB Commerce they're another great Irish brand and same with Night Yourself and just on the left hand side these are a few different uh, Irish agencies such as Monsoon Consulting, Milk Bottle Labs, AB Commerce, Magico. So if you guys want any advice or information in terms of platforms and web development agencies, I'm more than happy to support you guys after the call with this. And then last but not least, so these are various different supports available to Irish merchants trading online. So as mentioned, I'm a director in Digital Business Ireland, provide a wide range of supports across various different aspects to various different Irish uh, companies trading online. So if you want any advice or expertise, 
we're more than happy to support. Definitely do utilize the local enterprise offices. They have the Leo grants to obviously help you uh, get trading online. Initially, IE domain registry, so registering your .ie domain uh, first and foremost. They do some great reports, such as Digital Health Index, the latest tipping point report is definitely worth checking out. Your local chambers of commerce, they have a lot of webinars, different events available and crucial support that you obviously should make the most of obviously during these challenging times. On a larger scale, Enterprise Ireland, they have the online retail scheme. So if you really want to maximize your online performance, do apply for these grants because they're a game changer and they can obviously help you support your online growth both in Ireland and across internationally. And that's where the likes of e-commerce Europe fall into play. So if you want to expand internationally across various different EU markets, they provide fantastic support to us in Digital Business Ireland and we can support you guys through that as well. So going through all uh, today, we ran through supports, different tools that you can utilize to maximize your online performance. And this is one quote that resonates with myself. A lot of people have probably watched The Last Dance on Netflix. And this is one piece from Michael Jordan. So some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen. Others make it happen. So we can give you all these tools and knowledge and expertise. But unless you're obviously willing to do the background work, it's it's not going to pay off. But online, it's it's a fantastic opportunity. It's not a case of just developing your website and it's going to do do the work for you. It's continuous work in progress. It's it's like a relationship, for example. Like the more time and um, effort you put into it, the more rewards you can uh, to be reaped. So that's all for me. Um, really appreciate everybody's time today. Thanks again, Sandy, for Business District. Delighted to be part of Innovation Week. And as I mentioned, uh, more than happy to support any queries we have, whether it be in Humboldt Lexify, Digital Business Ireland. And if you have any queries, I'm happy to answer them during the panel discussion. Uh, David Campbell, Head of E-Commerce, uh, home by Flexify. Thank you very much. You're going to stay with us uh, for the Q&A at the end of this session. Just a reminder to everybody that you can submit your questions on slido.com or send them by email to events at sandyford.ie. Next up, we have John Roddy, Commercial Director, Codec. Um, John is a motivated IT professional with over 25 years experience in various roles. He's a proven leader with the ability to turn the dial uh, to positively impact revenue and profit growth, strategy and direction. Uh, he's a firm believer that technology can change the way we live, work and play for the better. His specialities include strategy, enterprise performance management, business intelligence, support and consulting services, cloud services and application modernization. John, you're going to speak to us uh, this morning about using Microsoft Cloud to innovate and deliver better business outcomes. I think uh, we're good to go. So uh, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I'm going to, uh, first of all, uh, just waiting for my slides to pop up. There we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, by way of an agenda, brief introduction to myself. I'm going to talk a little bit about Codec. Um, won't spend too much time on that. Just give you a brief overview of who we are. And then I'm going to talk about uh, what we've done uh, with the Microsoft Cloud to to really help our customers uh, over the last number of months. Uh, I'm going to focus in on a couple of examples. Um, it won't be too technical. There's some customer examples, uh, and then obviously I'm sticking around for the for the Q and A session at the end. So uh, if you'll just indulge me for a few minutes, I, I just want to talk about Codec, who we are. Uh, we are a privately owned uh, IT company uh, based on the island of Ireland, headquartered here in Dublin, established in 1985. Uh, we have offices in Belfast, Cork, Galway, London, uh, Cologne and Poland as well. Revenues in excess of 30 million, uh, 240 plus uh, employees and we're an award winning um, Microsoft practice. Um, We've over 35 years of industry know-how across various different sectors, including retail, manufacturing, food and beverage, obviously public sector as well, and aviation and many other utilities. Uh, and over those 35 years, we've we've gained not just what you'd expect from an IT company in terms of technology know-how, but obviously uh, we, we understand business as well. And I think 
our u- unique selling point here in Codec is that we we kind of marry uh, business and technology. So, for example, our ERP practice lead, uh, technical practice lead, is a qualified accountant. So he understands finance. He understands the technology that we we talk to our customers about as well. Uh, for those who don't know Codec, I always like to put up uh, just what what gets us out of bed in the morning. Um, we are very big on culture within Codec. This this slide came from a survey we did last year. Um, we're predominantly a technical organization, um, and what this was the output of that. So what we um, what we wanted to do as an organization was to challenge uh, each other uh, and to be challenged. Uh, we wanted to obviously grow, but very importantly, we wanted to enjoy what we did. Um, we wanted to work on the most exciting and innovative projects. And because we know more about the Microsoft full suite of products that we can we can do more for our customers as well. So that's just a brief intro to us as an organization. When I talk about full suite solutions, uh, this slide hopefully encapsulates what I mean. Uh, we talk about various different Microsoft products that enable remote working and change management and collaboration and productivity uh, underpinned by the Microsoft Cloud and our, our ability to uh, implement those solutions. We're very big on governance, uh, we're very big on quality, and we're very big on security as well. So that, that's just a, a backdrop, uh, I suppose, to, to who we are. So I suppose into the, into the body of, of what I really wanted to talk about is what we have been doing with customers over the last number of years, and hopefully some of the stuff I talk about will resonate with the audience today. Um, uh, the title of my discussion is uh, using the Microsoft Cloud to innovate and drive, uh, uh, deliver better business outcomes for organizations. So, you know, everyone uh, has heard about digital transformation and, and what the goal of digital transformation is to, to make businesses relevant in a digital era while, gro- while growing opportunities and profits as well as scaling efficiencies in the process. And we were all probably bombarded with the term digital transformation over the last number of years. Uh, and and for for us uh, in Codec, we, we see organizations as, as entering the fourth era of IT. Um, so if, if you look at this particular slide, really what it's saying is that uh, it's, it's digital transformation is becoming uh, uh, had become and was becoming very critical to organizations uh, over the last number of years. When I talk about the fourth industrial revolution, I'm I'm often asked uh, what that means. Uh, the first uh, was uh, around water and steam back in the 1800s. The second was around electricity. The third was around IT systems and being able to automate production lines. Um, and then the fourth is all about innovation, uh, the Internet of Things, cloud and efficiencies and automation as well. So that's what I mean when I when I uh, when I mention um, the uh, the fourth era of IT, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, prior to COVID, seventy eight percent of CIOs said the cloud was critical to their IT strategy, and seventy six percent of all businesses surveyed were were planning to move to the cloud in the next maybe three to five years. Yeah, it's something that I know I have to do, uh, but it's not top of my list at the moment. And then um, this happened. And I, I, I suppose for a period of time, we all scrambled. Uh, we we weren't sure how we were going to continue, what we were going to do, what the logistics was going to be for our organizations and how we were going to navigate those those troubled waters around COVID. Fear was an overriding factor for people uh, and sustainability as well. But 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 in terms of digital transformation, it really expediated uh, that. So eighty percent of all organizations uh, and business owners, um, you know, are now moving digital transformation and, and it's becoming much more urgent than it had done previously to the to the global pandemic. Uh, so even organizations that had started on their journey um, have started to move quicker for various different uh, for various different reasons. Um, so today as as businesses as and, and I suppose as people as well, we, we need to fundamentally rethink and change how we operate. And uh, organizations that are successful in navigating these changes, they, they all have one thing in common, in, in my experience, in dealing with them over the last number of months. And, and the word 
resilience is is really a cornerstone of what I want to talk about today. This means strengthening resilience across your people, uh, teams, and your organization as a whole. So when you do a search on the word resilience, these are the uh, these are the these are the uh, I suppose the outputs that jump back. People talk about change, capacity, recovery, mitigating risks, ability, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I found one quote: uh, "The ability of people or things to recover quickly after something unpleasant, such as a shock or injury, etc." And for me, that's kind of what we're all in the middle of at the moment. Um, and uh, from a from a perspective of how we move forward, uh, we're all on a journey. Um, and uh, in terms of how we respond to the crisis, and, and no two organisations will look alike. Obviously, the most important thing is uh, employee safety uh, and ensuring business continuity. They're the immediate priorities for all of us. Uh, but as we move from the respond to the recovery phase, uh, we should focus on adjusting. I suppose, to the new realities on the ground. What, what is, you know, as I'm looking through my recovery and moving in uh, respond, my response phase and then moving towards recovery, uh, what can I do now that's going to really help? And when I talk to customers, uh, I, I kind of present uh, in this format, in, in, as I call it, the three R's. So the, the respond, recover, and reimagine phases around market conditions. So um, responding is when countries uh, went into lockdown uh, to, to flatten the curve. Um, so obviously ensuring business continuity and employee safety was number one uh, and tackling immediate priorities to keep uh, employees safe and, and obviously to stay in business. Uh, we, we found um, this particular uh, uh, challenge uh, with lots of our organizations that really hadn't been used to working remotely, uh, hadn't really got an online presence and needed kind of urgent uh, assistance. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what, what we did in that initial respond phase. And then as we moved into the recovery phase where things started to open up again, um, you know, organizations needed to prepare to restart and, and rebound and be ready to grow into the right markets, obviously at the right time. And there was various other um, areas that needed focus on that. You know, we're, we're kind of hovering between respond and re, re, recover phase. But then most importantly, as, as we're looking to respond and recover, what does what does good look like in the future? You know, how can I future proof my organization to ensure that other uh, changes in the economy or pandemics or global events that are going to have an impact on my business? How can I strengthen my resolve? How can I make sure that my people, my organization and my processes and indeed my technology are future proof? So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that as well. But when I talk about resilience, uh, this was a survey done by the, by Boston Consultant. It was commissioned by Microsoft, and I I think you know it takes away a lot of the noise around technology uh, and thriving in the face of resilience. They talk about uh, requires resilience uh, across six key dimensions. So um, as you transform, it, it's critical that uh, you strengthen resilience across all areas of your organization. So obviously protecting and growing the, the, the top line, rapidly identifying and responding to changing customer needs with data-driven marketing, sales, and pricing. Um, both David and Lorraine have spoke in detail um, uh, in the previous presentations around that. Uh, developing an agile organization, really important one is enabling people. Um, you know, it's a change for, for us as, as business leaders. It's a change for our employees and enabling and empower, empowering our employees to work more efficiently. Uh, it, it, accelerating data and digital platforms. Da David, again, talked uh, in, in some detail about that in the previous presentation. Really important one is, is enhancing cybersecurity. You know, there's, there's a multitude of different uh, reports out that suggest that, you know, over the last number of months that, that is something that organizations of all size and scale need to focus on. And obviously, strengthening financials uh, in, in this current environment is, is top of mind for, for all of us in business. Um, so how do you strengthen resilience? And, and 
And COVID-19 has obviously increased uh, cost pressures uh, for all of us uh, in various different sectors. Uh, and given given the constraints that that's, that's bringing on us, um, you know, the Boston uh, Consulting Group come up with this three-step approach to prioritization in terms of what we should do. Um, number one is where do we address immediate uh, imperatives that, that will help us prioritize and respond to the, to the lockdown, such as keeping employees safe, ensuring continuity in sales and operations. Uh, the second one is what's your resilience ambition? So uh, what do I mean by that is um, in relation to COVID-19 and in your sector, uh, what do you expect to be the, the, the digital disruption and what do you need to prepare for and prioritizing um, those in terms of resilience and, and where your ambition is. Uh, and look, it, it, the last point is, uh, uh, you know, as we move forward is where should we invest to build sustainable resilience uh, in the future as organizations? So uh, the questions I uh, pose to customers is like, wh where are you uh, in terms of maturity and the target state of, of those six resilience dimensions that I, that I previously talked about? Typically, in organizations, uh, there are three, um, um, I suppose, uh, dimension. Th those dimensions are pretty, pretty much seen under three kind of pillars. Exposed, something that we need to look at straight away. Viable and future ready. And at a minimum, organizations should be viable among those key six uh, resilience dimensions. Um, uh, before they even look at future ready. Um, and once an organization is, is viable, it can build towards that ambition to become future ready. And, and to bring that to life, uh, if we look at this particular slide in detail, uh, it gives an example of the, the six dimensions on the top. Um, and before we move from exposed, uh, before we move to our future state, uh, we need to make sure that we are at least viable across each of those dimensions. So, so one example uh, that's probably relevant to this conversation is that an organization in this particular example is exposed due to limited online and remote sales uh, and marketing uh, using simple targeting without real automation. Uh, making that uh, as an exposed dimension, making that viable, uh, offering multi-channel offerings um, and remotely enabled uh, employees uh, and making decisions based on data, uh, making addressing those key exposed issues across um, not just uh, growing the, the the top line and protecting it, but also across developing agile operations, enabling people, accelerating data and digital platforms, uh, enhancing security and strengthening uh, our financials. Uh, it's a really good. I suppose, template to use uh, when you're looking at your own organization, applying your own sector, your own challenges to that and identifying, I suppose, uh, where you should start. When we talk about uh, how Microsoft is responding to that, Microsoft is one of those organizations that, that you know, uh, offer solutions that are integrated, uh, that people are familiar with. All of us are familiar with uh, Microsoft solutions, be they Office, be they marketing, be they cloud solutions. But we all use Office uh, in our daily lives from Excel, Word, email, et cetera. Uh, they come with built-in security. So you don't need to be a security expert uh, if you're using the correct Microsoft tools. Um, and they are they they differentiate value in terms of lower cost of ownership across the full suite of Microsoft uh, products. They integrate seamlessly with each other as well. And when we talk about technologies like IoT, uh, machine learning, predictive analytics, they they probably conjure up for most of us uh, really expensive, difficult to implement, um, and and really just for the big players that that's not an area that I need to focus on. Uh, but but with Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft full suite, whether you're a one or two or uh, employee organization or an organization that has thousands of employees, if you subscribe to the Microsoft services, you get that that same level of access as as the the multinationals get. Uh, and in in terms of enabling that and switching it on, it's pretty incredible what you can get now uh, in terms of. Um, 
the the capabilities uh, from the Microsoft Cloud. And Microsoft themselves and Codec have have worked very closely with organizations uh, over the last number of months, organizations that really hadn't been able to pivot to working remotely that were probably always office-based and um, helping them use products like Teams uh, to collaborate, to share content, to work, to do video calls, to do messaging, uh, to help organizations even enhancing, you know, data has become really important. We, we've seen a lot of uh, customers look at data analytics and artificial intelligence organizations like on Post, uh, organizations like the NTA uh, that are really seeing data as a really precious commodity in this time, looking at scenario planning and modeling for their business to see what future states uh, look like as well. So we've had, uh, I suppose, we've looked at it in various different phases uh, from a codec perspective where there was a, the initial, you know, we, we need to respond to this. We need to make sure our employees are safe. We need to ensure that the business can continue. Uh, what technologies can be used to do that? What can we do right now? Uh, what could we? What do we need to address to make our exposed run vulnerabilities uh, bedded in and secure before we move to how we can enhance those across those six dimensions we talked about? Um Microsoft, across those six dimensions, uh, have technologies that address that. You, you know, you, you can really start uh, wherever you want in relation to that, uh, depending on what's front of mind, if security is front of mind, if enhancing applications is front of mind, if connecting with your customers is front of mind, if understanding what data and analytics can bring to your organization. Uh, and, and not to think that those technologies are for larger organizations. They're available now. Uh, they're available out of the box for organizations. And Microsoft have, um, if you checked out the Codec website, codec.ie, our LinkedIn page, uh, you'll see, uh, and obviously Microsoft uh, Ireland's website as well, where you can see where they're uh, enabling customers with trials of this technology, uh, making them free and available to organizations to help them uh, during COVID. Uh, and Codec have done our bit as well, where we've developed applications to help organizations uh, get back to work uh, when, when that time does come eventually over the next number of weeks again. Uh, that, that's a free app that's available in the App Store from Microsoft that's been developed by Codec that assists as well. So we've seen a lot of that in the IT community in Ireland where we've come together as, as Microsoft partners and helped organizations, uh, you know, weather the COVID storm, I suppose. Um, so... Uh, my uh, key message is that uh, Microsoft solutions can quickly help you build capabilities that they can help protect and grow uh, uh, your your top line. They can help de develop agile operations. Really important is enabling employees uh, uh, and using uh, data uh, as a really important resource that a lot of us don't mind as organizations, but it's really, really important. Uh, Accelerating data and digital platforms, making them simplified, making them cost effective and flexible. Uh, I can't emphasize enough uh, how cybersecurity is definitely something that you need to look at. Um, and, and then using other different technologies to help strengthen uh, financials as well. So what does it mean uh, when, when we tether the word resilience uh, to, to, our, to our thought process? Well, it means uh, increased agility. Um, it means productivity increases in the region of 20 to 30 percent. It means stability uh, with fewer IT areas and less rework, IT errors and less rework. Uh, and bottom line performance uh, increases of between 12 and 20 percent uh, in additional earnings before interest and taxes. Um, so. Uh, just to wrap up, I, I kind of pulled together some some uh, examples um, of organizations that uh, really needed to embrace this. Uh, I thought the Toyota one was was uh, really interesting in terms of using, uh, giving employees the ability to streamline how they do their day-to-day -day work, uh, developing specific applications for them, uh, 400 uh Apps were developed by employees who aren't technical, uh, and no code, low code uh, development uh, that gave that saved over a hundred thousand paper sheets uh, with digitized processes as well. So, um, I've been told to wrap up or tight on time, but 
Uh, in summary, uh, thank you for listening. I, I'm sticking around for the Q&A. Uh, be resilient and, and please stay safe. That was a super presentation. I mean, some great presentations uh, from, from Lorraine and, and uh, also from uh, David. So I'm going to just take some discussion points and then I'm going to hand over to my co-presenter here, Connor, who's facilitating the whole day, who will actually go through some of the, we've had some questions from the uh, viewers who have uh, been watching you online. So I'm just going to do one or two debate topics and then I'm going to hand over to Connor. Um, so look, Lorraine, you mentioned uh, during your talk earlier that um, really at this point, retailers have to think not just locally as they would have with their physical premises, but internationally. So in a way, we're talking about a culture change here, that a change in mindset to actually you're now all exporters. Would that be reasonable to say? for businesses now to see themselves in that guise and very much um, the government is focused on this as well as an objective. So we've seen a lot of move from an e-commerce perspective uh, in policy over the course of the last number of years. It started with the introduction of the digital trading online voucher to try and get people to um, to avail of 2,500 euro, which is a support that the local enterprise office provides in order for businesses to have an online presence. Um, we've seen that upscaled uh, significantly with the online retail scheme, uh, which allows businesses you know, look to other markets and see the endless possibilities that exist there. So I think you know, there, there is a bit of a cultural shift going on. Businesses have to see, you know, that they're now in a global marketplace that has very much been developed over the course of the last number of years. And they need to seize the opportunities that that brings. And there's no reason why retailers in Ireland can't sell to Pedro in Spain and Giovanni in Italy. Um, it's, it's the same system they use, their website, once it's fully functioning, as David Campbell pointed out, um, and, and has a, a, a good payment system on that website, there shouldn't be any problem. Rain mentioned there, um, uh, John, uh, culture change. So digital transformation was your, the topic you talked about and resilience. So, you know, what are the top tips for retailers who are struggling? They they're traditionally were physical premises. They knew that business really, really well. And they're now trying to create the culture change, even with their, their staff who are used to ex expecting the customer to come in the door. They've now got to start thinking along the lines that uh, Dave was talking about promoting themselves social media wise how what are the kind of types for culture change yeah i mean there's there's a number of different tools and technologies that can be used from a from a people perspective within an organization so empowering your your employees uh, familiarizing them with uh, what the new normal looks like for them. So where they're physically working, how they're physically working. Uh, listening is is like as an organization, Codec was quite lucky in that we remote working was pretty standard for us pre-COVID. It's something that we've always done. Uh, but really helping organizations to, to see the art of the possible, uh, using those six dimensions to, to understand what, what the employee needs to do to do their job um, without getting too technical. There's a lot of out-of-the-box stuff that's available to organizations from, from Microsoft and from people, companies like Codec, that can really empower them to do that. But I suppose our own perspective within Codec, um, we've had lots of kind of one-to-one -one team sessions with people uh, on you know, uh, we call them town halls here in Codec, where we're met, we're constantly messaging to them, you know. And listening to to what their concerns are, so I think I think culturally uh, it's really important to listen to to the employees to empower them with technology as well. And and uh, you know, in some instances, uh, you look at technologies like DocuSign, where you know people used to have to come into the office to sign documents. Uh, if you look at where those particular types of uh, 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 collaboration tools now are coming in in the market. They they force us to kind of rethink as individuals how we can actually do our jobs. Uh, and then there's tips and tricks that we do around mindfulness with employees and and kind of you know when when you're working remotely a lot of the time you can feel that. I can never switch off. I have to have my laptop switched on or I need to be fully contactable, et cetera, et cetera. And, and bringing that element into it as well does, does help with that cultural mindset and that change. 
Thank you. David, um, you mentioned Cyber Week, and we are now in, in level five uh, COVID lockdown, so it, it highlights more important than ever that B2C businesses need to, to leverage Cyber Week. So that's what, the 27th of November, I think, um, when we chatted yesterday in prep for today, you mentioned. So what are we now, October 22nd? That's really less than a month. What are the absolute must-dos that Irish B2C businesses have to get in place before 27 November to get the Cyber Week banned? Yeah, I think it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity for the Irish retailers to capitalize on, especially with the sh huge shift towards online at the moment. But it is all about, as John mentioned, uh, you do have to look after your employees, the staff, because you can do all the marketing campaigns in the world, but you obviously have to make your, sure that your staff are fully functional, that they're okay to obviously do their uh, jobs to the highest standards and you need to be looking after your, your consumers interacting them with them for example uh, engaging with them across various different platforms whether it be email campaigns it could be social media checking in how things are you need to be doing your background research whether it be google search trends what are trending at the moment different search campaigns you can also look at these across various different platforms whether it be facebook instagram for example capitalize on these you need to be testing as much as possible all your campaigns just to make sure everything's fully optimized. Make sure you have everything scheduled because it's it's going to be bombarded for the retailers. You know, um, there is a massive there is a massive shift towards online in terms of just interacting with all your relevant partners is crucial. So, for example, your website. Make sure you're talking with your agency. Make sure it's tested, stress testing. It can handle the capacity. Logistic partners. Making sure you're in relevant contact with those for updated logistic times, making sure these are all updated across two different platforms for the consumers too, as Lorraine mentioned, whether it be website, email, social media campaigns, you just need to have as many digital touch points as possible and make sure they're fully functioning. Because if you don't have a positive customer experience, you know how reviews can obviously get. So you want to obviously be delivering the best customer experience to obviously promote your brand awareness and boost, boost, um, through sales and obviously brand loyalty thanks, across David. consumers. That's, that's, that's very comprehensive, much appreciated. I'd like to thank the speakers for, for fantastic presentations today. As I say, click green and buy nearby. I'm now going to hand over to Connor, who's going to do the rest of the Q&A. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Owen Costello, uh, Digital, Digital HQ CLG. Um, Lorraine, um, or... Um, but probably Lorraine, this is, is most appropriate for. Um, I think you mentioned 53% of the products purchased were cross-border. Um, is there, what percentage of the products uh, could, could the Irish, the Republic of Ireland, what percentage of those products would we be able to uh, make cross-border? Is, is that a, a question you could answer? Yeah, it's, uh, the figure is actually 47% of um, all spend online is actually leaked and fulfilled by businesses operating outside Ireland. Um, it's quite a comprehensive figure when you when you think of things. Um, you know, it's come down a little bit because uh, a couple of years back, about 70% of spend was uh, being leaked outside of Ireland, which meant that there was no be benefit to online businesses um, existing here. And neither was there any benefit ultimately to the Irish Exchequer in terms of, of uh, tax acquisition and whatnot. So, you know, Connor, you make a really, really good point. You know, it is important, I think, particularly now that we find ourselves in the second lockdown and, um, you know, the fact the virus is peaking and the fact that lots of businesses are on their knees and finding it very difficult to survive in these times, that if they're not online, that they do try and establish a presence, that they do try to propagate their goods and services right across all the social media platforms that exist out there in order to try and help them with their turnover and bottom line. As Dave pointed out, we're coming into a really, really busy shopping period for online purchases. You know, Cyber Week has always uh, been something that has been thriving over the years and none more so than this year, given the current circumstances we find ourselves in. But the last thing we want to see is consumers spending money um, with the other businesses that exist uh, in the EU, outside of the EU, in America, you know, it's very important that we do try and reduce that figure from 47% right down to um, as low as possible. So that's my big appeal uh, to anybody who's listening in or viewing this today. You know, buy green, click green and ensure that you support your businesses that are nearby. Thanks, Lorraine. 
Uh, you previously mentioned uh, a number, I think it was around about 29 million, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but two thirds of that, uh, I think pre-COVID, uh, were, were foreign online sales. But uh, that, that's huge opportunity for Irish companies. You know, there's still a piece of that pie. It's a very big pie. And um, so there's potential for, for quite considerable growth uh, during the pandemic for some companies. And, you know, if the businesses in Ireland um, even had 50% of that on a daily basis, it would make an enormous difference uh, to, uh, I suppose, the exchequer. Uh, we heard from uh, Tara Buckley, uh, Director General of Orgy Data, about for every, I think, one euro that's spent in the community, it creates, you know, two euros fifty for the economy. And um, just to get your thoughts on on that. Yeah, Connor, it's such a good point because we really need to be patriotic in terms of the way that we uh, look at our purchases. Right now, you know, people's mindsets have shifted over the years. You know, we heard earlier in the week um, about meta trends and, you know, the importance of greening of Ireland and the importance of greening of the globe from a climate change perspective. Well, now we need to really focus on what we can do to make our businesses economically sustainable, given the times that we're in. Um, and to your point, yes, uh, two thirds of spend was leaving the country. Um, but, you know, there is definitely a big movement and a big shift um, towards you know alerting consumers as to the great businesses that have an online presence that are in the country that deserve to be uh, supported over this time because at the end of the day you know we know from the huge money that was spent in the recent budget and um, the 23 billion that has been earmarked um, to be pumped into the economy that we need to play our part in ensuring that the money that's in the economy stays in the economy and that it's supporting um those sectors of society that, that are suffering most and none more so than the retail and hospitality industry right now. Yeah, thanks, Lorraine. Um, it's, I suppose it, it, it's quite appropriate. We, we've launched our own Spend in Sandyford campaign. So we're trying to encourage, encourage people within the Sandyford locality and outside the Sandyford locality uh, to spend their euro um, in Sandyford and support businesses in Sandyford, be it physically or online, more appropriately probably online. Uh, another question that's come in, um, maybe David, you could probably answer this, uh, suggest, uh, uh, around uh, logistics, um, how do you go about p uh, picking a logistics partner? What are the criteria you'd, you'd recommend or suggest? Yeah, like in Ireland, we're lucky. We obviously have some fantastic partners in terms of logistics, whether it be DPD, it could be DHL, it could be on PUS, for example. So like there is an awful lot of um, opportunities out there for the Irish retailers to capitalize on. But the most important thing, you need to find out what's the right fit for your business because it obviously does come down to various different aspects, whether it be scale, the amount of deliveries you're going to be shipping and the location. So is it is it practical? Are you going to get more accessible a pickup or a delivery locations for example very different support like you obviously have to make sure the actual partner can support your own business adequately and efficiently because if you're going to be paying for the service at the end of the day if a package doesn't get delivered the reputation is on your brand it's not with the logistic partner in most cases for this so you just have to be smart do your research if you're in one specific sector and maybe look for various different case studies and um, talk to similar partners who obviously work with a various different logistic partner and do your research with that but also you can tap into different support bodies for example so like we have different logistic partners within the likes of digital business ireland so if there's any advice or information we can help with we're more than happy to do that yeah, thank you david and david while you're there um another question that's come in um can you give an example of a good good website that uh uh, uh will will i suppose um sorry i'm just struggling to read it here sorry it's a, a website that gives uh, good examples of how to use blogs effectively um are you aware of a website yeah there's an awful lot of examples out there at the moment so the likes of uh, gym plus coffee they have weekly blogs you can look on to wolfgang digital so they do all various different insights core optimization so they're an seo agency but it's all relevant content that they're pushing out at the moment and it's exactly what you guys need in terms of whether it be seo for your website web development social media so as i said if there's any 
follow up advice or information and um, i'm more than happy to be contacted directly to support you guys okay thanks david uh john roddy if i could ask you to to come in what are your key learnings that you've experienced from a professional point of view you know during the pandemic what stands out yeah it's uh, uh i suppose a number of different things uh the resilience of of companies um i know i'm using that word again but the, there was the, the the i suppose the initial craziness of how we're how are we going to communicate how are we going to work uh, how are we going to you know stay in contact with our customers uh and and a lot of the barriers, the traditional barriers that were there in the past around moving to the cloud, using technology to improve business processes, they were kind of down the road things. Um, one of the things I've learned is that they've really expediated now and a lot of those barriers have come down. Probably, it's fair to say, out of necessity um, uh, from business continuity point of view, but we're seeing that, you know, it people taking small baby steps by for example switching on the microsoft cloud for for um for say teams and collaboration purposes they, they then start to take it a step further when they realize the potential uh, that solutions like that can give them and also how quickly companies were able to adapt to the new normal i, I i've actually found that quite inspiring i've also found how organizations across the board have have dug deep to kind of help each other out um for for Ireland Inc I I've really I've really seen that in action where you know I work in the Microsoft partner community and a lot of the time we're competing with each other but in 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 the last number of months we we've had cases where we've we've kind of worked together on certain projects uh, that are really important for for the country and uh, are are kind of well used and well known now where it wasn't about who was doing what who owned the project it was about coming together uh, and i have to say i found that quite inspiring yeah i'd agree we are a resilient bunch and what's been coming up uh, throughout the uh, the innovation week is innovation resilience collaboration and coming together and people working as a team uh, no longer enemies and it's great to see and i think uh, with collaboration um you know we were talking about ai yesterday and and you know did it have any limits i think when we come together as a people as a nation as employees as businesses uh, there are no limits um so i just like to end on that so i would like to thank uh, lorraine higgins chief executive D digital business ireland uh, David Campbell, Head of E-Commerce, Home by Flexify, and John Roddy, Commercial Director, Codec. Thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, it's been great contact. We've had great interaction. And uh, a reminder to everybody that uh, this afternoon's session is on economic forecasting and agile innovation. Um, we've got a great lineup of speakers. It's not to be missed. That's on at 2 o'clock, and the link are using... Um...